Hello and welcome to this video from zonalaudio.com. This video is basically a full take of an experimental sound design process where the ethos is that we create something from nothing. So starting off with one echo and the noise as a sound source and building it up from there. If you enjoy this kind of content, please don't forget to give us a like, subscribe and follow for more videos. This will be the first in a series of videos whereby we do some experimental sound design, uh, record everything that's going on, organize the files that we've captured into some kind of logical order, and then basically use that as a sound palette to create something. We end up with a hard hypnotic techno track We'll put the final mastered version at the end of this video so you can check that out and then you can see the processes uh, that are used in long form format. So for the final track, around 80% of the sounds in there are what is recorded in this video and then reprocessed, manipulated, chopped up, more processing to get our final sound. So if you'd like to see those processes, please do give us a follow and ring the bell so you're notified of when those videos are released. We're just setting up three different LFOs here. There's some nice new shapes for Live 12. One is the Stray and one is the Glider. And the idea here is to have basically three separate modulation sources all doing something slightly different. Mapping here to the delay time that has been set to time instead of sync uh, of the first echo and the feedback there and the modulation of those left and right time on the first echo uh, is really key to giving an interesting sound. It's a bit crazy here, so we just adjust the volume and stick on a limiter. Always worth putting a limiter at the end of your chain when doing any kind of process like this, just to protect both your speakers and your ears. So adding an EQ here, um, but just for more visual reference. There won't really be any EQ going on in this session. But like I say, the intention is to create the vast majority of our sounds uh, from what we're recording today. So I want to make sure that we've got some uh, options for bass and kick sounds essentially. So we need lots of low end, lots of kind of subby and low mids. So a nice feature of the LFOs in Live 12 is that we have the option to modulate and automate. In the modulate mode, which you can see on the feedback there, it's got a little blue dot next to it and we can actually still move the parameter whilst it's being modulated, which isn't the case if it's in the um, automation mode. We do use both, there's pros and cons to each one. The main pro of the modulate is that you can change the base value of the parameter that it's mapped to. So it also means it's still performative if you want it to be so. So adding RAW here, such a such powerful device. 
this is worth the upgrade alone if you ask me and so yeah the idea here uh, will just to be create some different tones with some uh, saturation clipping distortion etc videos will be largely unedited and there might be significant periods of no talking um, and maybe just some annotations instead. One thing that we're trying to do with the channel at the moment is give a more overall top to bottom view of music production.
around this point, we start to introduce the resonators, essentially giving a more musical tone to what we're doing. This can then be later used for chord stabs and pads, essentially more musical elements of our track.
towards the end stages of our little sound design experiment here. As you can hear, potentially nice pad created here. Um, but essentially what we're gonna do is just really random up the LFOs and just go a little bit more crazy. So far we've been using the LFOs just to kind of slowly move everything around um, with a little bit of randomness and jitter. But we're essentially gonna make them all much quicker now and just, yeah, kind of push those final boundaries uh, of what's possible in this sound design session. take off the dry wet of the resonator uh, we will probably have something quite different to what we had before in terms of how you might approach a sound design session. I can all also really recommend doing stuff like this if you're ever lacking inspiration a little bit and you don't particularly want to work on music but you want to do something, this is a great way to come up with some inspiration. What we're going to do now is show a time-lapsed video um, of just organising everything that was just recorded. So. This is a little bit boring in terms of a practice to do, but can be highly beneficial for if you want to essentially create a palette of sounds that is uniquely yours. You can see here, I'm just chopping everything up and kind of arranging it by frequency content and anything that's a little bit more interesting is going into the uh, effects channel. And then, yeah, we're going to create a track out of this. 
After the time-lapse video of organising all these sounds, there's just a, a snippet of how we start to approach basically making a kick out of these sounds. And then after that, we've got the full mastered version of the track so you can hear what it ultimately turns into. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see future videos. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.